The Chicago Bears have added another player in the 2023 NFL Draft, and it is linebacker Noah Sewell. Yes, the younger brother of Panay Sewell uh, at, for the Detroit Lions. Uh, I am Harrison Graham. Welcome into the show. We're going to break down this selection here. Uh, linebacker out of Oregon. Interesting story. You know, a couple of years ago, his freshman year uh, for the Oregon Ducks, I remember uh, – a lot of conversation being like, this is the next great linebacker. And he went on to have two more good years, but I don't think he quite made that huge leap to help him get to that status. So here he is as a fifth-round pick in a non-premium position for a lot of teams. So uh, I think uh, that's kind of the result of that, of him not taking – uh, those further steps. Let's talk about the selection here, get a little scouting report for you guys, and then I'll give you some more reaction from my end uh, when it comes to one Noah Sewell. Uh, good tackler. He definitely improved in that area this year. He missed 19 tackles in 2021, only missed eight tackles this year. Very physical. That's a strength of his. Uh, straight line speed, 4.64 in the 40. That's solid. That was well above average, according uh, to Math Bomb's relative athletic score. Uh, major drop-off this past year overall. And I kind of hinted at that when the pick first came out. I was like, he didn't take another step after 2021. He became a better tackler, but he struggled in coverage a bit this year, and he didn't really elevate his game to the next level. So I think he's got starting linebacker potential. The reason I'm more lukewarm on this, not because I don't think the range is proper. He's Tom Downey, our draft expert's number 145 overall player. You get him at 148, so it kind of lines up. It's more of just... This is a position you invested in heavily in free agency. You added Tremaine Edmonds. You added TJ Edwards. You've got Jack Sanborn. I think you look at this, it's like, okay, maybe he beats out a Jack Sanborn. If he does, great. That's a good thing because Sanborn played well last year. Dylan Cole is there as well. You've got some decent depth there. I thought there was a chance the Bears would add linebacker on day three. Uh, I just didn't think they would add one before adding an edge. Now, I'll make this point. I made it earlier. I'll make it again. You can't force the issue at edge. You can't, or any position. Uh, if you're on the clock and you don't have edge rushers rated highly on your board, you can't force it. I'm guessing the Bears had Noah Sewell pretty high on their board from when they picked here at 148. So they got that player. You needed another depth linebacker. Now, look, you're on day three. You're not going to get a lot of starters. I get from the fan base reaction of, oh, it's boring. This is just going to be a backup linebacker. Like, yeah, that's probably what you're getting here, at least on day one. You hope he gives you some good special teams value. You would think that uh, a day through linebacker will be able to do that, but he's got starting potential in him. I, you know, I don't think it'll be right away, uh, but I do think he's got a chance to get some snaps early on here. Grade the pick of Noah Sewell. A, B, C, D, or F. By the way, those Oregon unis, you know, I just love them. They just pop, don't they? The line, the the highlighter, uh, yellow, green. I just, I, I'm a big fan of that. A, B, C, D, or F. I'll go C plus. Mixed bag, and here's why. I don't think it's a top need. That lowers the grade for me. I think for where he was picked in the draft, it's probably more of a B. But when you factor in what the Bears roster looks like position by position wise, I'll lower it to a C plus. I'm going to be real with you guys on every pick. I think it's a fine pick. I don't think it's a bad pick. I don't think it's a great pick. I'm like, eh, okay. Like, I think he can contribute, but I might have gone in a different direction. That's kind of my feeling. Like, Luke Whippler's on the board when you make this pick. I probably would have drafted him, but clearly something's off with Wh Whippler because teams haven't taken him yet. So I would still take him if I'm Chicago. We'll see if that happens later on. But here's Dane Brugler breaking down at Noah Sewell. Uh, he says, doesn't have the tape of a modern-day playmaker with clear limitations in man coverage, but he thumps downhill with the physicality, pedigree, and competitive spirit to make plays between the tackles. He projects as a rookie backup. He can become a valuable role player. That's kind of how I just broke it down, right, outside of uh, some of the specific X's and O's that I think he's a high-level backup that uh, has potential to be a starter and can be a rotation type of guy. Special teams, hopefully. Uh, I agree with Brugler. He's much better against the run than in coverage, which – Nowadays, that kind of limits how much you can get snaps. But here's what I will say. The Bears stunk against the run last year. They have committed to improving that area by adding at linebacker, adding some interior defensive linemen. So I do like that. Got to get better against the run. Again, C-plus grade for me. Not the best, not the worst. It's fine. He'll be a player on the 53, so I don't have an issue with that. Your home for the entire NFL draft is us here at Chicago Bears. Now we're bringing you the latest Bears draft news. 
rumors. If any more trades happen, we will break those down as well. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any coverage here on the Chicago Bears. You look at his uh, total numbers last year, 55 tackles, two sacks, three breakups, did have an interception, so... You know, he's not completely lost in coverage, but that was not a strength of his, especially uh, on his 2022 tape. You hope that uh, with uh, some NFL coaching, he can uh, at least become passable in that area. But he's got physicality. He did 27 reps on the bench press of 225 pounds. Pretty good vert, 33-inch uh, uh, vertical, decent broad. Uh, 40 is pretty solid for a linebacker of his size. He's almost 250 pounds, 4'6", uh, 4 four there. So uh, some above average testing. His overall math bomb, a relative athletic score, 8.38 out of 10. So that's above average. Uh, that's definitely pretty solid there. So, again, I, you know, I've kind of broken it down here. Off-ball linebacker wasn't a top need. You invested in free agency, but you're on day three, and if you sign your board, you sign your board. You're still early in a rebuild. I'm going to give it a C plus, uh, but I don't think it's a bad pick. The talent is there. We've seen that. Early on in his college career, we were like, if this guy continues to elevate, he's going to be a star. He didn't necessarily reach that, but I think that still could be in this kid. I think he could find a way to be a starting-level linebacker in the NFL, and if he starts for this team one day uh, – that's a damn good pick in the fifth round. We saw Jack Sanborn start for a lot of last year as an undrafted free agent. So uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Noah Sewell can be a starting level player. So this is what the Bears have done on day three of the NFL draft. Uh, overall, I really like it. Roshan Johnson, I was a big fan of that pick. I, I liked getting a running back on day three. I think he contributes right away. Tyler Scott, you could argue the best value pick in the entire draft. We had him as a top 60 player on our board. Dane Brugler, uh, my favorite draft analyst in terms of breakdowns, had him as a round two player, number seven overall receiver. You get him at 133, very back end of the fourth round. And then Noah Sewell, who's a good, not great pick. I think a, a, a guy who could be a solid player. I don't think it's a top need for Chicago. But, again, it's not a bad selection. You're not, you know, taking a guy that no one's ever heard of and is just clearly considered a reach among uh, – uh, you know, NFL draft experts. I think it's fine. You pick again here at 165 coming up. You got a couple of seventh round picks. We'll see if Ryan Pohl, Chicago, trades down with this fifth round pick to try and maybe get a pick or two in the sixth round. Maybe you trade up from round seven to, to add a sixth round pick. We'll see uh, what that ends up looking like. But uh, the Bears do go off ball linebacker. And I do think they were going to need to add another one at some point. I just didn't know it would be right now with Noah Sewell, but that is what they have opted to do. Who do you want the Bears to draft next? They just took Noah Sewell. They took Roshan Johnson earlier. They took Tyler Scott. Who do you want the Bears to select next in the 2023 NFL Draft? Go ahead and let us know. And like this video, subscribe if you want to support the movement, the rocket ship here on Bears Now. We're trying to keep this channel Going upward, we appreciate all of the support. I'm going to continue to give my honest analysis, the latest news and rumors. Producer Rolly's hanging out with you guys. So hit that sub button. Noah Sewell, you are a Chicago Bear. Welcome to the Windy City.